Welcome to Networks. In this module, we look at solving problems relating to network graphs. So what is a network graph? Well, it is a visual representation for either a series of events or for a, how a system might flow particular bits of information or other items. It can also be used to demonstrate how you get from one point to another. Networks is a relatively new form of mathematics. It's only been around for within the last 100 years. And it is very useful in lots of computer programming, especially things such as Google Maps and being able to identify what is the quickest route to get from point A to point B. Well, I have here a network graph it is a planar network graph, and I have asked in the example to match the words to the parts of the graph above. The options are vertex or node, isolated vertex or isolated node, adjacent vertices, edge or arc, loop, and multiple slash parallel edges. A loop is, an, is a line that connects from one of those dots back to that same dot again. You can see there that I've also written their weight. Weight indicates a number that has been attached to a line and usually does not necessarily mean a kilogram or, a, uh, or anything like that. It just means that it has some value. You can almost consider it like a map and consider its distance. We can see here an isolated vertex and a vertex are those dots on the network map. The isolated vertex being on its own, isolated meaning on its own, and a vertex there is any of the other dots that are in the network graph. The lines that connect the dots in the network graph are referred to as edges. If I'm referring to the two dots or two vertices that are attached to the same edge, they are referred to as adjacent vertices. If I'm referring to two edges that are connected to the same vertices, so in other words, they are two parallel lines from the same dots, that is referred to as parallel edges, sometimes referred to as multiple edges. However, I prefer the word parallel because it seems a lot less confusing that way. Those are the aspects that make up a network graph. Different networks are called different things, depending on their structure. We can sometimes call a network graph a multigraph. One of the easiest to identify is the degenerate graph. A degenerate graph has no edges in the graph whatsoever and is only made of vertices. Another type of graph that we have is a subgraph. A subgraph is what is a part of a larger graph and may contain some or all of the edges and vertices of the graph. It is important when identifying a subgraph that it has the same connections and this uh, from uh, the same vertices. A disconnected graph is one where the network has some of the uh, vertices connected by edges, but there are two distinctly different sections or two or more distinctly different sections that are not connected together by a bridge. A bridge is an edge that connects two uh, vertices together if they are connecting uh, separate network graphs. A complete network or a complete graph is when every vertex is connected to every other vertex. We can see in this example here that A has an edge to B, C, and D. Uh, we can see that B has an edge connecting to A, C, and D. C has an edge connecting to A, B, and D. And D has an edge connecting to A, B, and C. The last two graphs that we need to discuss here are simple graphs and connected graphs. Examples one and three are actually examples of both. In example one, this will be an example of a simple graph because it has no loops or multiple or parallel edges. 
And it is also a connected graph, not to be confused with a complete graph, a connected graph where every vertex is either con is connected to every other vertex, either directly or indirectly. Because they are indirectly connected, it is, uh, but all of the vertices are in some way connected together, it is considered to be connected, but it's also, also simple. Number three is also an example of a connected graph, with the exception that it has a bridge, that's the edge between D and E, that connects two sections of graph. Planar graphs. At the very beginning in the first example, I suggested that that network multigraph is also planar. So what is it that makes a graph planar? I have got three examples of graphs here. Graph one, graph two, graph three. Graph one is planar. Graph two is planar. Graph three is not planar. What is it about graphs one and two that make them planar and graph three not? In order to understand this problem, it might be easier to put some scaffolding questions. The first one I would ask is, what makes graph 1 different to graph 2 and graph 3? Then I would say, what can I do to graph 2 in order to make it look like graph 1? Well, graph 1, of course, has no overlapping edges. Graph 2 and graph 3 both have edges that overlap with the others. Therefore, a planar graph must be any graph that can be drawn such that there are no overlapping edges. So can we redraw graph 2 so that it has no overlapping edges? Well, yes, we can. You could do this either by eliminating an edge and redrawing it, or simply by moving a vertex. I have chosen to redraw an edge. The edges you can consider to be flexible. They don't have to be straight lines. They look nice if they're straight lines, but they don't have to be straight lines. Therefore, I have chosen to erase edges and redraw them such that there are no overlapping lines. Unfortunately, no matter how hard you try, you cannot do this with graph 3. There are just too many overlaps. A question that's sometimes asked is, is there a way to determine just by sight if there are too many overlaps? Unfortunately, there isn't, not for further maths anyway. However, one thing that does help in some way is to have a look and see how many sets of lines overlap. If the graph only has one set of overlapping lines, it is quite likely that it could be redrawn. If it has multiple sets of overlapping lines, it is less likely to be able to do so. You can also see if there is some sort of planarity, that is whether or not it can be planar, by using Euler's rule, which we'll talk about a little bit later. In example four, I have asked which graphs can be redrawn to be planar. How you solve this is, there is up to you in terms of there are multiple different solutions. You can either eliminate edges and redraw them or simply move the vertices. As is my previous example, I have chosen to eliminate edges and redraw it that way. Here are my solutions. I have therefore discovered that the first one is not planar because you cannot redraw those edges. Degrees. To determine the order or degree of a vertex, I have asked this problem. If vertex C has a degree of two, vertex D has a degree of three, and vertex E has a degree of four, State the other degrees and explain what degree of a vertex means. Let's have a look at vertex C. It has a degree of two. It also has two edges going to it. Vertex D has a degree of three, 
So therefore, let's have a look at it. It's got three edges connecting to it. Now, vertex E is a degree of four, but it only has three edges connecting to it because one of them is a loop. So what is the category? Well, the category has to be how many times or how many entrance ways, if you like, are there to that vertex. With E, it's got four entrance ways because you can enter via the left of the loop or via the right of the loop. Therefore, by that logic, A should have a degree of two, B should have a degree of three, and F should have a degree of four. Sometimes you'll hear of networks being described as having an even degree or an odd degree. If it has an odd degree, or simply, sometimes it just said that those vertices are odd, it means that they have an odd numbered amount of entrance ways to that vertex. Similarly, if it's even, if it says it's an even degree or simply that that vertex is even, it has an even number of uh, entrance ways to that vertex. Euler's rule for planar graphs. We have a mathematical relationship that can help us determine if a graph is planar. If a graph is planar, if I take the faces, subtract the edges and add the vertices, I should always get the answer of two. A face is a region of the graph that is bounded by edges or it is the area outside the network. So I'm here to confirm that the graph below is planar using Euler's rule. There are four faces indicated by the F1, F2, F3 and F4. The number of edges, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the number of vertices there, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, that is six. So four take away eight plus six equals two. Four take away eight will be negative four plus six equals two. Negative four plus six is uh, equal to two. So two definitely equals to two. In this next example, I have to convert the following into a planar graph. To com and confirm its planarity by using Euler's rule. Remembering that planarity just means is it planar or not. You could again solve this multiple ways. I found it, it was particularly helpful to be able to redraw it by moving one of the vertices. One of the easier ways to solve this would be to move the vertex E outside to the left of the box. By redrawing this network, I'm able to simply count the faces by uh, counting all of the spaces that are bound by edges. And by bound, I mean the outsides are all edges. And of course, the outside space as well. I could have also just used the rule as well to determine this. However, the question did specify that they wanted uh, the graph to be converted into a planar graph. So if I want to do that, I need to make sure there are no overlapping edges. So now I can simply count the edges of the and the faces and the vertices that I have. I can count here one, two, three, four, five, six faces. And now I can count the number of edges that I have. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve edges. And A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. There are eight uh, vertices. So six take away twelve plus eight equals two. Negative six plus eight equals two. Therefore, two equals two. In example eight, I've asked how many faces does the following graph have? There are, again, two ways of solving this. You could eliminate an edge or eliminate a couple of edges and redraw it and simply count. Or alternatively, you could use Euler's rule. When I've redrawn the graph, I could count that there are six, but we can confirm this using Euler's rule. So to find the number of faces, I'm going to go with F take away E plus V equals two. So if I didn't know the faces because there was some overlap, 
I'm just going to count the edges and vertices. The number of edges, there were nine edges, and there were also five vertices. So, and that would have to be, so if I did faces, take away nine plus five equals two, I then can simplify that to make that uh, faces take away, well, what's negative nine plus five? Well, that's going to be negative four. So faces take away four equals two. So then I need to know what number take away four equals two. It would have to be six. Six take away four is equal to two. With example nine, a graph that is connected and is planar has five faces and 13 edges. How many vertices? You could draw out a network using grids and boxes, but this would be better solved using Euler's rule. So I would write faces take away edges plus vertices is equal to two. There are five faces, take away 13 edges, plus some unknown number of vertices equals two. Five take away 13 is equal to negative eight. And then that's plus some vertices equals two. And then I just need to rewrite that sentence. Instead of saying negative eight plus V, I can just write V take away eight equals two. So some number take away eight equals two. So that number has to be 10. So the number of vertices would be equal to 10.